Hello, kia ora. I'm Philip Duncan. Thanks very much for joining us for our Climate Watch update for the month of September and the season of spring. And it's proudly brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our business partners at IBM. Let's get into it because there's a bit of a change coming this month to where we were in August. August was defined by big highs and big lows. As we go into September, it might be more of the high pressure side of things. In fact, we're looking at an uptick in high pressure and a bit of a reduction in low pressure. Now that doesn't mean summer's here and you can put on the t-shirts, maybe some days, but not every day. We've got a cold injection kicking off the first weekend of September and it will be wintry in some areas. But the spring pattern means that we tend to see those southerly changes being quite short-lived, followed by warmer westerlies, which sort of reduce the chances of big frosts and all that sort of stuff. So let's try and make sense of what is going on and we kick off with the animated air pressure map for the first day of September. And it shows in the bright area where the high pressure zone is parked. So out over the Chatham Islands and the North Island, starting to slip off the South Island, big low pressure this weekend and for the start of next week, a big storm way south of both New Zealand and Australia, but enough to impact our weather, especially with the next incoming high which will be around uh, the southern parts of Australia in the days ahead. And that's going to also work to help fuel the big southerly coming into New Zealand. Before then, fairly settled across Australia. Low pressure you can see here in the darker colours up to the north. So let's start off with the discussion about La Nina. So as you can see from the Bureau of Meteorology, we are still in a La Nina alert. That means that we could go into a third La Nina as we go into spring. So we've just had two of them for the last couple of years, now potentially a third one. So they take a look at all the models around the world that are publicly available. New Zealand's not one of them. But they do include many other uh, reliable models in there. And you can see this line suggesting that as we go into September, October, there are models that show we're into that La Nina category. On the right hand side, it's a bit hard to see, but it says La Nina down here in the blue and El Nino, the opposite, up here in the red. So we're definitely not near El Nino. It's definitely focused more towards La Nina, but as we head towards the end of the year, look how many of the computer models start to shift back into that neutral zone. So yes, we might have a third La Nina, but whether it's going to be big and impactful for places like New Zealand, we don't yet know. This is the uh, sea surface temperature map, also courtesy of the Bureau of Meteorology. So it's normal to be seeing the colder than average weather at the equator. That's what, uh, sea surface temperatures I should say, not weather. Uh, that's usually what you see as we start to go into La Nina and warmer than average sea temperatures in our part of the world. So that's certainly what we're seeing. It means that in this zone here, especially the Coral Sea and down around New Caledonia and Vanuatu, this is a breeding ground for tropical lows as we go in towards spring. And as you can also see around the New Zealand area, still slightly warmer than average. So now we go to the Moana Project, a fantastic website, please check it out. Uh, and it's partially made uh, with the help of MetOcean and MetService. So this area you see here with the red shading, that's indicating that conditions are warmer than they should be. And we've been seeing that a lot this year, there's been a huge amount of marine heat waves in the New Zealand area, and that helps enhance rainfall and also our temperatures. And this map here shows what the current temperatures are. So at the very north of New Zealand, around about 17, 18 degrees still, if you just go offshore a wee bit, that's pretty mild. But if you're in the lower part of the South Island, um, a different story, more like eight, nine degrees in the water. So if you're wanting to go for a swim this spring, uh, north is probably better. And the soil moisture anomaly, well, not surprising at all that we're seeing most of the country either green, where we should be, or blue, a little bit wetter than average soil-wise. So let's take a look at the forecast and see what is on the way for the month of September. And we do it week by week, out to the third week, which kind of covers us past the halfway mark. Now, the reason why we don't do four weeks is because there's no real, uh, not there's not a lot of good reliable weather maps that far out. So we then switch to the IBM supercomputer, which takes on board all of the different models and produces one nice easy graphic for the whole month coming up. So we'll show you that in a moment, but first of all, week by week, kicking off September. And as I said, high pressure is dominating as we kick off the start of September. This is for the first day of September, Thursday. Now, I talked earlier about the storms brewing down here, so it looks very settled, but that will change as we go into this weekend and for the start of next week, around about the 5th of September. It's going to be pretty stormy down in the Southern Ocean, sending up southerlies. But as you can see, it kicks off 
with a belt of high pressure. Now by week two, you can see that there's a bit of a break in the chain link fence of high pressure, but it's still pretty dominant, seeing high pressure coming all the way along and over the New Zealand area. And this here encourages northeasterlies and northerlies down across the country. So that's why we're saying there's signs of an early spring pattern because there is. And we're also seeing over here with this placement of high pressure, windy weather carrying on around the southeastern corner of Australia. And that's also going to inject some cold air for you. Now, as we get to the third week, so this is kicking off on September the 16th. So this week, uh, we'll show you what sort of goes on as we head towards the last week of the month. And what we're seeing is more high pressure to the north of New Zealand, some low pressure up here in the tropics, but not enough for it to really be registered on this map. And then some big areas of low pressure in the southwestern corner of Australia, which will slowly move into the New Zealand area and then probably fall apart as a windy westerly. So that is the uh, setup, at least, for the next few weeks ahead. And what we are certainly seeing, more high pressure, even though we do still have some rainmakers in there, but there's a lot of high pressure dominating, and that's probably the biggest change that we're seeing compared to last month. Now, this animation might be hard to follow, but this is showing you what we just showed you then, sped up with all the maps in between. So it does show you, uh, you can see the, the date down here, it might be a bit hard to follow it, but what you're really looking for is just where are the big blocks of high pressure tracking, and are there any rainmakers? There's one this weekend, and then it's gone through with the southerly, but then a lot more high pressure, northerlies and westerlies coming through. So for those of you who can follow that, you'll notice a lot of high pressure really dominating, but still some rainmakers in there, it's not all doom and gloom. So let's talk about rain. The first week, of rainfall. This is the departure from normal. In other words, how much wetter or drier is it compared to usual at this time of the year? And what we're seeing is a bit of wet weather coming into northern New Zealand and the west coast, otherwise drying out for a number of places. But in Australia, what a remarkable difference this is. Through the driest parts of the country, that's where most of the rain is falling. And uh, further down where it's more agricultural, uh, that's where it's drying out. So we're seeing a bit of wet weather coming through, perhaps a sign of La Nina building and also the Indian Ocean Dipole. So those conditions are producing rain in areas where perhaps you wouldn't normally be seeing it. So that's just the first week for the anomaly. But when we actually take a look at the expected rainfall, the total of rain coming through right through to the middle of September, you'll suddenly notice that that middle part of Australia is not looking quite so wet. So the areas in the white boxes indicate very little in the way of rain coming for those areas, including right down in the southeastern corner, some parts of ACT. Now over in New Zealand, it is classic spring well, it's a classic spring weather pattern where you're seeing all the rain on the west coast and dry on the east coast, which is a sign of dominant westerlies and northerlies. So we're seeing some big rainfall totals in the north. The colours you're seeing, 100 millimetres for some areas there, and on the west coast, over 300. This is a close-up version of the same map that I just showed you. Uh, so this might make a little more sense, especially if you are colourblind. We put this up on the website so that you can track it a little bit easier. But you're seeing 300 millimetres plus coming over here for the west coast, and over here in Canterbury, maybe only five millimetres. So it's definitely, um, the Southern Alps are definitely blocking a lot of that rain coming through, and this rain coming out of a northerly system this weekend and early next week, producing 60 to 100 millimetres of rain as it tracks on through. And for more details, just go to ruralweather.co.nz or weatherwatch and see your hyperlocal rainfall totals. Now, as I said earlier, the maps don't get very reliable the further out you go. So that's where we rely on IBM and their supercomputer. And this is showing you the departure from normal for the month of September. And what it's showing you is the, despite it looking like there's sort of a bit of drama going on with the green and the orange, it's actually pretty much here in the middle part around normal. So maybe a little bit drier than average for some and a little bit wetter than average for others. But generally speak, speaking, for the month of September, rainfall looks either normal or perhaps even slightly below normal in some areas, but nothing too extreme showing up just yet. And believe it or not, even with all that rain on the West Coast, it's still leaning a little bit below average. And when we take a look at the next three months ahead, the season of spring, again, it's mostly in that middle ground area here, plus or minus... 15 millimetres compared to normal. So that's looking pretty good, I think, for New Zealand. Now, when we also add Australia in there. You can see that most of Australia is leaning the other way. You're leaning more into that wet zone, going into the blues and um, greens. And then you go up to Papua New Guinea, 
just to show you that the maps aren't broken and you can see blue and red so you've got extremely dry and extremely wet depending on which side of the mountain range you're on up there in Papua New Guinea and I'm just showing you that because in the New Zealand area it is frequently showing the green and the yellow which is right here in that middle zone. Temperature wise, so we've just showed you the rainfall, here are the temperatures and what we're seeing is warmer than average for the north of Australia and a bit warmer than average for the south. New Zealand leaning half a degree to one degree above average. We've seen that every single month this year. That's despite the cold, frosty start we had to August and the wintry snap coming in for the start of September in New Zealand. We are still leaning warmer than average, but a big chunk of Australia, including Sydney and Brisbane, they're not. They are leaning a little bit cooler. You could also argue so too, uh, Adelaide and Melbourne, and that is covering September, October, and November. And that's brought to you by WeatherWatch and IBM. So there we go, that is the forecast for the next uh, few months ahead. I think certainly for September, it's slightly positive for New Zealand to see a reduction in those big rainmakers. But as I said, we're still going to see some heavy downpours in both main islands coming up. So please do stay up to date with ruralweather.co.nz and also weatherwatch.co.nz. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again in one month.